Images now seared into people's minds. Drivers trapped on highways needing rescues. Transport trucks navigating the Don Valley Parkway like cruise ships. The potentially dangerous scenes should never have been allowed to happen, according to this climate adaptation expert. When you know that an extreme rain event is coming, shut it down. People can't use it anymore. It will be um, annoying to, to not have that available, but it could save lives and, um, and people's cars and, and money. Our early predictions and estimates working through Environment Canada um, uh, data and all the rest was that we were going to see significant rain, but rain that we felt we could handle. Toronto City Manager says a review is now underway for future major rain events. What I expect us to have next time is better understanding of how we can use the data we're collecting to make better decisions. But to sit there the day after and say always, well, we could have done this and this, the Don Valley is just one example. The DVP likely the best problematic example, built low in a floodplain where floodwaters naturally go in a city generally paved over decades ago. The Don River has burst its banks multiple times over the years, including the dramatic flood of 2013. The best way to floodproof the city going forward, introducing new materials, more culverts, and even wetland and marsh areas throughout the downtown, according to this University of Waterloo expert. How do you build in more wetlands and things of that nature when so much of the city is already kind of accounted for? It's complicated um, and it's costly, but there is a permeable pavement, for example. Other cities in Canada use porous pavement options and examples of inner city wetlands designed to soak up intense rainfall, also known as sponge cities, exist in multiple cities in China. So it's costly to implement um, these adaptation measures, but it's costing us so much more money every time that we're impacted uh, by one of these events. So it, in the long run, it makes sense. We just have to make that mental switch, which we don't tend to do until we're impacted by some sort of major climate um, issue. Maybe the silver lining is this one was bad enough that it might have, it crippled the city yesterday. So it might be <laughs> enough that it finally wakes us up. I think so. I So many of the videos that we saw and some people being impacted, like Drake being impacted, you're like, oh, even very, very rich people can be impacted <laughs> by this. Former city planner Jennifer Keysmat was quick to point out online, attempts in the past to pay for better stormwater infrastructure have failed at City Hall. We must take action to build the resiliency uh, of our city and uh, work to mitigate the impact of these storms. Now the mayor says she's ready to pay for it. We've put aside money in the province, half of it. The, the federal government hoping, we hope that they would uh, join in with that flood protection work. Some will naturally look here, the massive flood mitigation projects in the Portlands, one that includes completely redesigning the mouth of the Don River. It's being built with wetlands and various overflow channels to capture water. The eight-year projects are expected to be fully operational by next summer. So this summer, Unfortunately, we're not getting any of that protection, but next summer, once we have the flood protection that you're talking about, do you foresee an incident like what we saw yesterday happening again, even with all that mitigation work that you're talking about? We do, in fact, expect that uh, same issues to happen because the areas that we're flood protecting weren't impacted by the floods yesterday. Turns out those major flood mitigation projects will help protect the new massive community being built in the Portlands, floodproofing 240 hectares of land south of Lakeshore to Lake Ontario. This is maybe depressing, <laughs> a little bit more depressing <laughs> than I thought our interview would be, sir. <laughs> Don't go that. <laughs> but important information nonetheless. It is. It's, uh, it, it is. It's important. And I think that, you know, that, that misconception, it, you know, may be... Um, uh, maybe a little more widespread. Um, and uh, so we've been trying to let people know that, uh, yeah, unfortunately, the work we're doing, very important, um, going to protect uh, a lot of assets, um, public assets, private assets, and lives is, you know, is not solving that problem. It's solving a different problem. And while the Portland's flood mitigation work won't prevent this from happening again, at the very least, they provide a blueprint to the rest of the city of how to floodproof effectively. Chris Glover, CBC News, Toronto.